News Channel 8. This is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday today. Nice of you to spend part of your day with us. We've got a terrific lineup for you. We begin this time with that new report card that grades each state on honesty, ethics, and transparency. Even if you're cynical about politics and perhaps about government, you may be surprised at how bad the grades are. We will focus today on Maryland and Virginia, and we'll tell you why D.C. wasn't included. The report was put together by the Center for Public Integrity, and our first guest this time was part of the team that conducted the research and the analysis. Freelance journalist Miranda Spivak with us now. Miranda, welcome back. Good to have you with us. Thanks. Were you surprised at, at how bad the grades are? So many C's and D's and F's, not nearly enough A's and B's for what we all like to think of as a fairly mature democracy. Well, I think it is a mature democracy. I don't think anybody's disputing that. But uh, the Center for Public Integrity did a similar report three years ago. I was not part of that then. But they found the findings were very similar, even though the questions were somewhat different. So um, it's not a total shock at all that the grades are bad. One of the big reasons is lack of transparency at the state level. That's a big issue in almost every state. Uh, control and regulation of lobbying is also a problem. You know, in most state legislatures, and that's a key part of what was looked at here, uh, state government in general. But it, most of them are not full-time legislatures. There are very few that are. And, you know, you look at Maryland. They have a citizen legislature. They want a citizen legislature. They want people who are in touch with the real world and the business world as well as, uh, you know, the political world. And so. Inevitably, there are potential conflicts of interest. The problem, is, the question really is, how do states regulate that? And, and that's where they really fall short. There have been so many scandals over time, all across the country, going back decades and decades. I mean, we've had governors go to jail. We've had prosecutions. We've had every um, uh, type and manner of wrongdoing that you can imagine. And while not all of those opportunities for reform get seized upon, some of them do. And so. Going back to my first question, I guess I'm surprised, and, and I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed that we're not in a better place now. Well, I, you know, I, I think it's a it's a very valid concern and one that really needs to be looked at state by state. Um, I'm actually doing some work apart from this on state and local government secrecy or transparency. Take your pick. It's actually secrecy. Some of it's advertent and purposeful, and some of it is just inadvertent. States are not. They haven't caught up. They don't spend the money to catch up on things like digitizing their information, making it accessible online. Um, a lot of states are behind on that, Maryland and Virginia among them. Um, Virginia did do a little bit better this time, and that was partly because in response to the McDonald case, mm -hmm. um, where the governor took um, uh, gifts that uh, uh, appear to have been regulated by the state, but the, the mistake he made was that he didn't report the gifts. Now, uh, Virginia's changed its law now under Governor Terry McAuliffe and the current General Assembly there to make reporting requirements much more stringent and also lowering the amount to $100 that you can take as a gift. So that's an improvement. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, you could also just ban gifts from lobbyists. That would be a really creative way to start thinking about this. That means lobbyists shouldn't be able to buy legislators' meals. But, you know, when the Maryland General Assembly and uh, I don't know the exact salary in Virginia, but in Maryland it's in the mid-40,000s. Most people aren't living on that. They have other jobs. And don't they get a per diem? They do get, so, yes, so, they so, do. So why do they have to take lobbyist meals? Good question. Yeah, if they're getting but, tax dollars to, buy, to get their lunch, why do they need right. lobbyists no, to wind them and dine them with steak? That's and, a very good question. And, and I'm not up. defending it, but no, I'm no, just no, saying know, that, that just, it, it, it cries out for some Well, you could, you could ban gifts. Right. Um, and Maryland almost does, actually. They have a much stricter uh, regulation about gifts from lobbyists than Virginia so does. So what, what, what did this report go after? Take us, you've, you've, touched on, uh, you've touched on it yeah. in general terms. Take us a little deeper. What are they, so you mentioned transparency. transparency. You've talked about lobbying. which is public information and the accessibility of public information. Um, just as an aside on that, speaking of transparency, Maryland is the only state left in the country that requires its um, lawmakers and, and officials to file cam um, financial disclosure forms only in paper, which means if you go online to see what a delegate's, um, you know, what holdings they are, and the whole point of that is to ferret out conflicts of interest, 
you can't get it. You have to go to Annapolis to get it. And then they get a little note saying that Bruce DuPoy looked up my... Uh, and some of those notes have happened. Oh, yeah. And so, For you, too, you know, of that, that's, I mean, right there is, that's about 100 years behind the times now man, on, on that issue. I remember, but, I remember well a story we did on News Channel 8 many years ago about a state a legislator who had an outsized role in the budget process who during the months that he was in Indianapolis serving in the legislature he was a lobbyist for a company that had that had business before the state and he would lobby the agencies he whose budgets he controlled right, right. and that's that's not uncommon around the country no, no former legislator so, so but you asked you know what issues recusal is one of them and interestingly enough this was a matter of some discussion actually i did the maryland uh, analysis for the center for public integrity you know what constitutes a law requiring recusal they really wanted it spelled out i mean their best practices that they looked at required that the laws in general be much more explicit than they are in many, many states. And that is actually another reason for the low grades, because they had a certain sort of set of criteria. And, and ex the best way I can describe it is explicitness. Uh, you must recuse yourself when X, Y, and Z happens. That's not written into the law. Maryland officials believe they have a pretty strong recusal requirement, but then ask the General Assembly how many times people have recused themselves from votes. It's, it's minuscule. So recusal procurement practices was another thing. I mean, that's where the big money is in state government. And um, the comptroller in Maryland, Peter Franchos, actually railed against this quite a bit and said that procurement is messed up. Cronyism? Cronyism and a lack of competition mm -hmm. more. Um, that, you know, the, the tendency is to go back to the well over and over with the same contractors. Um, and, and then auditing is another thing. I mean, were those contracts successfully executed? Um, like I found myself wondering, and I know other people did too, when Maryland tried to roll out its health reform portal, right. and it was terrible and right. it was so over budget and so behind schedule why wasn't there a refund why, why weren't they able to go to this company that no doubt at the outset uh, uh, said you know we're the best we're the brightest we'll deliver uh, on time and for the price that we've negotiated and yet that's not what happened it's frequently not what happens and you never hear about money coming back to the to the yeah, treasury I don't know that there was money specifically coming back to the treasury but there were changes that came out of that and and there I you know there were some legal skirmishes over yeah. over whether the contractor really fulfilled so how did Maryland do what what kind of grades did Maryland, uh, get? Maryland was sort of in the middle of the pack I think they got a D minus they were 20 23rd though so that just shows you how badly everybody did uh, and Virginia was right around the same although Virginia had come up a little bit from its um, rating three years ago but again the criteria are not all the same so it's a little hard to compare the two um, but, you know, neither state did well. Um, the best state, believe it or not, is Alaska, <laughs> according to this set of ratings. Um, Connecticut did okay. California does okay. But, you know, nobody does really well. And, and I think, you know, what it ought to do is spark a whole conversation in state government about how they're performing. It, you know, especially here in Washington, we don't think a lot about state governments, although that's really where the rubber hits the road these days. There are a million reporters covering the Hill right. and federal agencies. Is part of the issue here that there are relatively few reporters digging around uh, in places like Annapolis, in places like Richmond, uh, able to... Uh, you know, usually most of the time, folks like us are chasing the story of the day. To go in depth on a project takes time, and our bosses have to have the ability to sort of feed the monster on a daily basis right. while allowing someone like you to spend a couple of days a week or longer uh, digging into something that might be really great at the end, but takes time to get there. Right. Is, is that part of the well, issue? I think that is part of the problem. You know, the immediacy that has occurred in journalism. There's a greater emphasis on immediacy. Uh, get it out there and check later, which sometimes is unfortunately the case that you can see in any place. But, but the decline in coverage of state capitals is very pronounced. The Pew, um, Pew Journalism Center did a study of that last year and just found that the numbers had, had dropped drastically. And yet, you know, with gridlock in Washington, state government is all the more important now than ever and really deserves more scrutiny than most media organizations are giving it. Does, when, 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 uh, when a grade of D or F was assessed, were there specific 
uh, recommendations made to the various states about how they might improve their grade? Did they did they pinpoint? Okay, your <clears throat> you know your your lawmakers can be be wined and dined by the lobbyists whose industries they regulate, as an example, or the transparency thing where pay, you have to get in your car and drive a couple hours to read a fa a piece of paper in a folder rather than just go online. Right. Things of this nature. Uh, they don't make specific recommendations in this study, but what the study does, and you can tell if you click a little past the story itself, the stories themselves, you can see what the questions were and what the answers were, and you can see what the laws say in relationship to what the questions are. So for example, putting more data online, that's clearly uh, a best practice that very few states are doing. Um, and that's one reason on transparency why most of them just flunk or fall very short. And why wasn't DC included? Uh, well, that's a good question, and I don't really have an answer for you on that, but the answer I asked about that, too, and the answer I got on that was, well, it's not a state, and, and they felt that comparing D.C. government to state government because of all the intricacies of financing and gotcha. other issues in D.C. made a difference. And people can find uh, more on this by going to the Center for yeah, Public Integrity. Yeah, it's publicintegrity.org, and it's called the State Integrity uh, Project. Freelance journalist Miranda Spivak, part of the team that put together this really interesting report. We all should be upping our game when it comes to scrutiny of what's happening in our state capitals. Thanks very much for coming in and speaking oh, with us today. Good thanks. to see you as always. You too. Thanks we'll step aside. We're back with more right after this. Okay. Great.